everyone. Um, I'm Tamara Krinsky. I'll be moderating tonight. Um, we heard a lot of laughter and claps coming from the room. So I'm just so curious, how many of you were seeing this for the very first time tonight? Woo Where have you been? I'm a, I'm a little jealous of those who raised your hands because I love this show and the fact that you get to see it for the first time and fall in love with it for the first time is amazing. Um, but I'm kind of the target audience because I'm a nice Jewish girl from Jersey, so there you go. Um, but a lot of the appeal of the show is the incredible cast and for that we have to thank our two guests here tonight. Jeannie Bacharach and Maggie Bacharach, so welcome. Let's just clear the air, she's my cousin's daughter. <laughs> <laughs> or we're married, <laughs> however you like. However. <laughs> Spread the rumors. So um, let's start at the beginning. So the two of you, there's an interesting casting structure for the show. The two of you worked on the pilot, correct? Correct. Yes. Okay, so can you talk about, um, there were uh, multiple people who worked on this. Can you talk about how you work together with the other team and how that kind of sorts out? Um, I had had the uh, absolute pleasure of working with Amy and Dan before on a pilot for the CW a couple of years ago, and then um, short-lived, um, barely seen series on the ABC Family called Bunheads. Woo um, thank you, thank you, the four of you who watched it, um, <laughs> and my mother. Um, and uh, so I had uh, worked with Amy and Dan before, so when this came about, um, they were shooting in New York, so they knew they needed a New York casting director, but it was the pilot was cast contingent, which uh, means that they weren't going to make the pilot if they didn't find the midge that they all loved. Um, so they asked if I would come and help out on finding their midge, and we did that. <laughs> The reading began. <laughs> the readings began. Uh, and then uh, at the same time, uh, Meredith Tucker was reading people in New York. And then once we found Rachel, um, I was originally only supposed to stay on to uh, help with that. And then Amy and Dan said, would you stay and cast the rest of the series regulars? Uh, so that is what we did. And then all the um, sporting roles, uh, other than Bailey DeYoung, who um, plays her best friend, who had also been on Bunheads, um, came out of New York because they were shooting there and it made sense. So let's start talking about Midge, because without an amazing Midge, this show doesn't work. And um, given the Emmy, I think you, you found the right person. Um, also, let's mention you won an Emmy for this show. Um, and there's an, Ardios, there's an Ardios nomination that's happening right now. So congratulations on all the success. So Rachel was not a stranger to you because she was in Manhattan, which you cast. Correct. So, what was that like as you were, you know, reading the script for the pilot was like, oh, I know exactly who it is. It's Rachel. How did that work? Actually, yes. <laughs> um, I, I, she really was the first person I thought of when I was reading the script. Um, and so, and I think some of that had to do having just done Manhattan, which was a period piece. Um, she was sort of a little fresher maybe in my mind, but in the uh, initial call we had with Amazon and Amy and Dan, um, we brought her you, up. Yeah, like right away. Just yeah, like, and they were like, Rachel mm, hand. I don't know, is she funny? Yeah. Uh, that was the big question. Yeah. Um, and, and there was, you know, a little bit of a name game that mm -hmm. happened for a while. Um, but Amy and Dan's writing is so specific uh, that they were not fast. very <laughs> fast, very fast. Um, <laughs> they were not comfortable making an offer. So what happens is you get, you know, uh, a certain list of, of actresses, and in this business, uh, the perception is, you know, they're offer only, and that just wasn't going to fly for Amy and Dan. So there were a couple people who I'm sure are kicking themselves right now uh, that they chose not to read. Um, so we started reading people, and Rachel came in probably a couple weeks in. She she was in the middle of something. She was. Yeah on vacation, she was doing a reading in Cape Cod. Yeah, I feel like it was even kind of like in the middle of the process, she read, was it, did she self-tape first? No. She came no, and read. Yeah, she came, I, oh gosh, that's came terrible, back. I can't remember. It was, and then, yes, was, and then we went, it was and then we flew her in, um, but yeah. Yeah, we've actually, Alicia Lohman, I apologize for any of the audience questions if I butcher your names. Um, Alicia Lohman wanted to know how many times did Rachel read before she was offered the role? 
I actually I think you're right. I think she self taped. I think she self taped, and then we brought her in, and she screen tested. Right, she came in in L.A., and that was pretty much that sealed the deal. Yeah, she was so. in in the room with Amy and Dan. Yeah, and what? was terribly sick. Yeah, she was Poor so thing ill. was so sick. She was just, like sweating and uh, didn't have her full voice, but she stuck it out. And yeah. there was, you know, that was it. Yeah. So let's talk about Amy and Dan for a minute because, I mean, they created Gilmore Girls, Bun had so many wonderful shows. What is it like to be in the room with them? Are they changing a lot of things in the room? Are they, you know, are they creators who want every word read exactly as written? Yes. They want it read <laughs> exactly as written and... Fast. Fast. <laughs> fast, 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 always fast. Pick up the um, pace. Uh, and they, they, uh, the wonderful thing about them is they, they are very clear. Either the person is it or they're not. Um, they don't sort of, you know, hem and haw. Mm -hmm. um, but they're uh, an absolute blast to have in the room because they are some of the funniest people I've ever met. And so in quick, so quick. Oh my gosh! I mean, you're exhausted sort of after being in the room with them. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but you know, and you're like, you have to be on your A game to like keep yeah. up. Oh my gosh! Yes. Um, yes. but, uh, and even still you're not keeping up. No, you're like, no, <laughs> mostly, mostly, yeah, <laughs> mostly it's the Amy show, which is yeah. fantastic to watch. Um, but yeah, they're in there, you know, and, and again, there's, they're so clear about their vision and, uh, and how they, and how they want to work with actors. Mm -hmm. Um, they have a very specific way of working and, and I think that's part of wanting to see people read for the role too, to just sort of know that they were going to be the kind of actors who would respond to Amy and the type of direction Amy and Dan give and the way that they work. So, so it sounds like if you were giving advice to folks coming in for a show that they were fast, doing, mm -hmm. fast. Yes. Just fast and be willing to. That's be. most mostly the direction you'll get from Amy, <laughs> who uh, has to see absolutely everybody read. Um, Cindy Tolan, who does the casting for the series in New York, brings in people who have one line have to read in person for Amy, and that may mean and going out directing. to New Jersey, yeah. um, to location, or out to Queens. But it's worth it for the show. Go yeah. there, get there fast. Yeah, yeah. fast, <laughs> fast. Did I say fast? <laughs> fast. <laughs> I think we got the message. Um, <laughs> um, it's a lot of words you got to get in in uh, like a time period. I mean, you know, it's only what, 40 minutes or something. You got to talk fast. So I'm curious actually for the two of you then, you know, when you have um, creators who are so specific about what they want, because I've certainly been in the room with creators who, as the piloting process is happening, things change. Um, where for you is sort of the creative juju that comes in? Well, I think there's something to be said for directors who do specifically know what they want because yeah. it gives you a lot of guidance. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I think when it's too broad and they don't really have a specific idea, you kind of find yourself and the producers and everyone kind of wandering as a result. Um, and what they want maybe hasn't been appropriately, you know, relayed to the network or the studio or whoever. So along the process, you kind of keep finding these hangups of, oh, we aren't all on the same page or whatever. So some guidance and I think with Amy there is just a yeah it's it's a fast and it's a way of speaking and and kind of a grasp of of that type of dialogue which is helpful I think for us because we, you kind of go yeah they, they can do that or they can't right like it, it's there's a little less kind of wandering I think in the process for sure and and also the time period was you know very specific there are just certain actors who feel too contemporary, you know, to make that work. So that also um, narrowed down the field somewhat. But um, but it was just fun because you just, you know, you just were reading more and more, you know, people. It's um, till, till that person walks in and you go, yeah, that's it. And I will say, I mean, we read those sides I don't know we how could many actually times. do we the, could Joel, do. the Joel yeah. and Midge breakup for you right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> who are you going to play today? <laughs> you know who I'm going to play. Um, please do the whole scene. Please do the whole scene. Please do the whole scene. Um, there was a time. But but with writing that great, like you can keep listening to it. I mean, how many projects you know that people read for you know, or you have to on the other side you sit and listen to, and you're just like. Ugh. You know, by the end. No, we of, don't. We don't feel that way at all with actors. <laughs> Never, ever. They feel Maggie. that way. They feel that way. Um, but it, it's just like the material is such a joy, right? So it just makes it. And it's also um, the the trick with Amy uh, Amy's writing and Dan's writing is is you can't play the comedy. 
um, and they don't want you sort of playing, you know, the yuck yuck or going for the comedy. It, it, it the the comedy comes out of playing it as real and grounded, and the, and then it's sort of the situation. Yeah. Um, so that was also the tricky thing in in reading people for this role because people were trying a little too hard. And which is why comedy. Rachel works, I think, so all right because she's. She is such a real and grounded actress, and she's just playing, yeah, those moments in the scenes, and it's not a but um bum. It's just and th and that was the deciding factor for her as well. Was just you know even though comedy was not you know the the top of her uh, resume, um, she was so smart mm -hmm. and um, so trained that you you know you can you can teach really the rest. I mean, yes, you have to have a certain comic ability, um, but also you know Midge's journey is such that she's not supposed to be great at comedy to start. So that was also. So along those lines, did she have, did Rachel have to actually deliver any sort of stand-up set at one point as part of the audition process? Or did but you? They, they, the, the drunken last, you know, yeah. that was the, the big audition scene. The, the toast um, at the beginning, uh, the breakup scene, and then if you made it to callbacks, it was <laughs> the, 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 the first stand-up routine. So. You know, there are shows where we actors get to bite into those scenes, which is amazing. Um, what would you give us? The sort of costumes people came in in were fabulous. So, okay. So, so fun to see people co could completely embrace it. Okay, so that, By yeah. the way, fantastic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so those are some of my questions. When you have something like this that is a period piece, what are your general thoughts on to costume or not to costume? And when you have a big, this is two questions, when you have a big, big dramatic scene like that, you know, sometimes we're told to underplay it, sometimes we're told to really no go for it. What wisdom would you impart to a room full of actors about that? Well, I, th I, I do think um, dressing period, uh, just for your, um, as the actor, to make you feel of that time period. I, I think if you're coming in, you know, in tight jeans and stiletto, he I mean, you, you just, you're not connected to the character. My, my feeling about dressing for an audition is what makes you feel most like that character that helps you connect to that character. And I think in this particular case, it, it really helped a lot. And not so much about, oh, I, you know, how do I picture this person yeah. in that time period? But I think it just helped you, uh, helped the actors get into the character much more. Yeah, and it's not necessarily, it doesn't need to be like a, you know, head to toe, here I am, this is how, you know, this is Midge. Just, yeah, right. like, uh, yeah, something that feels at least period appropriate enough that, yeah, it does like people hold themselves different when they're like dressed for the 50s or whatever and um, carry themselves and speak differently. You know, there's kind of a, yeah, it ties it all together. And uh, and then in terms of, I, I, I mean, I'm always of the mind, go big or go home. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, it's so much easier as a casting director to pull somebody back mm -hmm. than to try to figure out if they can go further mm -hmm. um, and you know that and and that was a big scene and and you know really being prepared because of all those words if, if people were still on the page it, it really hurt because you just couldn't sort of get a, a real flow and, and again to know that people were going to be able to make that language fly yeah it's like doing a Sorkin script in a different kind of way exactly. and yes she is very specific about the placement of her words <laughs> They, they have like, Amy and Dan have a very specific thing that they do and they do it so, so well mm -hmm. and it works, right? So you kind of have to, you have to read it as, you know, as it's written. Otherwise it doesn't, it yeah, doesn't The rhythm, the rhythm is, was, the whole thing it, yeah, it would get really thrown when people yeah. were not, not saying it were perfect. Yeah. So there's Rachel and then there's the rest of the family which you cast. So let's talk for a minute about casting Tony Shaloub and Maren Hinkle, her parents. Uh, well, um, Tony uh, was is everything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he is the best. Uh, he, he was my idea. Um, and uh, but you know, but the problem was in the in the pilot script. You know, he doesn't have very much to do. So it was like, you know, I brought him up to Amy and Dan, and they're like, "Yeah, <laughs> we're not getting Tony Shalhoub. Um, Have you seen how many lines he has?" Um, and I was like, whoa, 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 "Wait, let's let's just talk about this for a minute." And they're like, "Well, wait a minute. Yeah, actually, if we get Tony Shalhoub, we would actually write for Tony mm. Shalhoub." And and that was actually, I think, really the idea of 
Midge moving back in with her parents and and um, and where a lot of the first episode went with them uh, had to do with a lot with getting Tony. And uh, yeah, so they, you know, they were able, we were able to at least get him, you know, he read the script, he, he, he loved the script, he loved the, uh, he has uh, at least one daughter, if not more, and um, really loved, you know, this female uh, lead character. And so he, you know, got on the phone with Amy and Dan, and they, you know, pitched to him Wow, they saw this character and where it was going, and... And he did not have to read. I was going to say, so he yeah. totally doesn't have to <laughs> Tony, read. Tony, I mean, you know, once you have a shelf full of Emmys, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, and then uh, Marin um, came in and read. I mean, yeah. and we, we had read uh, a lot of women. Um, yeah. and, uh, and she almost didn't. Yeah, she was between her and one other woman. I won't say who. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it, came da it came down to the wire, and, um, and she got it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and she's the best. Yeah, she's just one of the kindest people in the world. Yeah, she's so and sweet. Alex and, yeah, and young. I mean, but that was that was important too. I think for that again, sort of helped to sell the time period. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean that's another interesting question as well. You know, so much of the time, actresses in this town are told to play young and are not allowed to play sort of fully formed women with lives and households and here she is she's playing a grandmother yeah when i think of Marion hinkley i don't think of a yeah. grandma so you know was she well, hesitant was also, about that at all uh, no i mean she just yeah. loved yeah. the role the other tricky thing was um because it was period finding women who had not had work done mm. always <laughs> makes it hard when it's period yeah Would that be a, a lesson to all of you out there <laughs> cancel that appointment <laughs> Um, it, yeah, it, and it, it, there are a lot of people we had to yeah. take, you know, between the face and the boobs. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about Alex. Now, Alex had worked with Amy and Dan before. You're laughing. Why are you laughing? You have to share that with us. Because I thought of Alex when I read the script. <laughs> um, but now, she, do yes. you think... Do you think that's because, I mean, your credits are amazing, brothers and sisters. I mean, you've seen so much talent during your tenure, but do you think you thought specifically of people that ultimately appealed to Amy and Dan because you'd worked with them before? Like, because... Well, uh, th with Alex, uh, it was my first conversation with Amy when she um, asked if I would work on it. Uh, we were talking about the script and things like that, and I said, well, you wrote Susie for Alex, right? And she said, Alex who? said Borstein she goes oh gosh no you know I love Alex I love Alex but she's older than the, how I see the character I really she had originally seen Susie and Midge as being contemporaries, contemporaries yeah yeah um, and she also because she knows Alex so well knew that Alex had um, was planning to move to Spain uh, with her kids and just sort of you know needed a little break and she's like I and again, she was like, she's not going to do this role. It's like, you know, I had, and she's lost this weight. And she's, <laughs> you know, um, she was like, no, no, no. That's, you know, we should, we, should, we should see people. Yeah, I think it was a different picture than she had in her mind for whatever reason. But when you read the script, it was so Alex Borstein. Like, uh, yeah, I, we, think, like, I think without her even realizing she wrote it for Alex. She wrote, she it, wrote for it for Alex. Alex. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so we started reading people we read and reading and reading and oh. and we'd you know we'd send her choices and she'd be like mm, yeah i don't think so and i would say because it's alex yeah <laughs> i even like, like oh, no, I, no, no, I love alex i love alex but you know no she's in spain she's not in high, uh, and, I've, and, I think, <laughs> and like we were I mean like giving direction in the room and stuff like I think we both heard could you Alex, just watch Alex first right, scene like, and then uh, come in and do the audition we need Alex about however many years younger right to appease this you know kind of image or this kind of preconceived idea but she came around she did <laughs> But Alex did a Alex did a chemistry read. She yeah. Did. Well, I was gonna. Th I love when you like give me the segues for the question I'm about to ask you, because <laughs> I was gonna ask. You know, you talk about chemistry between actors, and sometimes it's you know romantic chemistry. Sometimes it's family chemistry, so they really feel like a family. Um, and in this case, there needed to be that very specific dynamic between Rachel and Alex between the two. Yeah, characters. they they did a chemistry read. Rachel did because uh, Rachel obviously was cast first. Rachel did a chemistry read with Marin and with Michael. And with Michael, yeah. And Tony got an offer. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I've forgotten. I've forgotten that her and Marin. Yeah. They then she flew after after yeah. Right. 
after she sort of became the it's choice like before they, if, I know, before they signed off, they did a chemistry read. So technical question behind the curtain. So chemistry read, was it something that was taped that was then watched on tape or was it the chemistry in the room? Uh, well, I mean, you know, the other wonderful thing about Amy is she will fight tooth and nail for whoever she believes in. And so um, she was in the room with them when they were doing their chemistry reads and working with them and directing them. So I and mean, you she do tape it and you do tape you it do for tape it. for Amazon to see. But I mean, you know, she saw it in the room. And so I don't think Amazon stood a chance of saying no. But <laughs> OK, so the first question on my list is about working with Amazon. So thank you. We'll keep going. Um, <laughs> wow, this is yeah, it's good. Um, so Amazon. So, you know, this is I mean, this was kind of three and a half years ago now. Is it three years ago? Well, of 2017. I mean, it's at least two years. It's yeah, at, least at least two years. years. Two years. So, okay. you know, now we all know Amazon as an incredible producer of content, but this was closer to the beginning of that process. You know, they weren't as far along with original content as they are now. Um, was that something that the actors were ever concerned about? And how was Amazon to work with as a producer? I mean, I don't feel like we got a lot of pushback from actors or agents in terms of... After working um, for WGN, Amazon yeah. was like <laughs> a breeze. Uh, that's a breeze. Like, no, that's it's a... not just the Chicago Cubs and, <laughs> right. you know, baseball in Chicago. I, I swear She's it's a real network. She's talking about Manhattan. Which, yeah. yeah. See, um, most of the people here don't even know what WGN is. <laughs> They're like, sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, didn't, I don't feel yeah. like we got any pushback. Um, no, I mean, I think they were established enough at that point. Yeah. And the script, I mean, just, you know, people flipped yeah. for the script. I, I don't think I've we've ever gotten that many calls. I mean, it people was crazy. were just, yeah, it was crazy. people were in love with it. And the Amazon people were, the were just the best. They're the best. Yeah. They really, they hire people that they trust and then they just let them do their job, which is a miracle, so not, yeah. you, you know, because it doesn't happen all the time. Well, and yeah. I and I, uh, I've known Donna Rosenstein, who's the head of casting there for a long time too. So we also had a shorthand um, and a real trust, and um, we'd been through the trenches together. So uh, so that I think it counted, you know, for a lot. Um, but yeah, I mean, it it just is the difference of of feeling like you you know you've been hired for a reason and to trust the work that you're doing and again you know Amy is, and Dan are such strong voices too you know there are other producers we've worked with who you know if they start to get a little bit of a um, negative sense from the studio or network you know they'll immediately sort of back off or start second guessing themselves but uh, not not for Amy and Dan but they they were awesome to work with so when, as you've been as you've been talking about coming up with ideas for the casting, um, your role, your proverbial Rolodex, not that they really exist anymore, goes, um, you know, I you, actually did have one, but yes. so yeah, so I'm that old. So you've got a very deep Rolodex, um, and at this point, when you are ruminating over who to bring in for something, how much of that? What percentage of that would you say is? actors that you've worked with versus opening the door for new people. And obviously younger people are always, almost all the time gonna be newer, but especially when you are casting people say above, you know, 30-ish or so and up, who, you know, you just may not have met yet. How does that work? Um, I mean, I think on a pilot, I think the door is very open. You kind of go like, we have to read everybody that could that's in the ballpark. Yeah. And um, I'd say that as a casting office, we're very pro finding new people. Um, I think sometimes in episodic TV, just because of the pace of it, sometimes you rely on that Rolodex a little bit more um, because yeah, the time's just a little bit tighter and you know you gotta cast someone and you know, you've got however many people that you think, yeah, they could be great. Um, but I think especially on a pilot, it's just, well, and, and again, yeah, yeah. Amazon was, I mean, it was about finding the right person. So, yeah. you know, it's so great that they didn't feel, you know, that they needed to absolutely have a name. It was really about finding the right person for the role. So, um, but yeah, I mean, that that's the joy of what we do. Yeah. It's what makes it fun is is discovering new people or, or, you know, opening that door, you know, to give someone an opportunity or to reinvent, you know, for Marin, you know, this was... Yeah. Um, a, a little bit of a sort of, you know, reinvention for her. So that was super cool. So during the first season, was there anything that you were surprised by as it played out? Directions the characters, the actors kind of went with the characters or 
Did you have, and if not, did you have a favorite scene that you, oh. you got to see? Uh, yeah, I wouldn't say too surprised just because, you know, in talking with Amy and Dan, and, and again, once Tony sort of came on board and talking through sort of where that was going to go. Um, I think they had it all so fleshed out. Um, in advance yeah, in terms of the yeah, characters good, that we had. a good amount of it, for yeah. sure. Um, gosh, favorite? So hard. I mean, j just some of those shots. I mean, that, that moving through the um, costume shop where uh, Kevin Pollack works. I mean, oh, you know, yeah. those like, I mean, mm -hmm. those tracking shots are just mm -hmm. unbelievable. But uh, um, I'd say some of my favorites are with Rachel, Tony, and Marin. I, th I think the family stuff is just... I know my favorite scene. Tell us. It's when um, to she comes... Oh. Mm. For those of you uh -huh. who have not, yes, if you I know right here in the middle. La, 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 la. There's a, there's a, a great scene with um, Tony and Rachel when he's trying to find some things. He's trying to find his piano, for those of you who know. Um, and they're kind of going at it a bit, and it's just yeah, so good. magic. Or the, I also, yeah, when she comes back from having been out at the club and yeah. and the parents are waiting up and oh it's my gosh such, yeah i also think bailey de young is just fantastic and i i just love watching her and midge their their work their exercise class mm -hmm. oh <laughs> i mean come on I, I mean come on <laughs> come on so great and i also love the scenes with all of the in-laws together yeah and sort of the status and power plays yes. that are happening in them because yes. they're all masters as they sit across that yeah. table from each other so yes. yeah um, so we were talking before about the fact that um, you saw these scenes over and over again. I'm going to pivot to a general casting question. Um, do you use readers in your office? Do you read with people? Do you read with people? What's that process like? We actually did have a reader. Um, we don't for, usually, but yeah, but but because <laughs> it was a point. yeah, well, <laughs> and because it was cast contingent, we were you know seeing really just that role. So mm -hmm. we were watching the and they you know those are long monologue scenes. Um, and so we did actually have an, an intern um, uh, who was an acting student down at Chapman, um, came in and was our reader for, uh, for the Midge auditions. Mm -hmm. um, we, uh, on pilots, I will sometimes, um, again, because you're reading the same scenes over and over and, and it really can give you know, us a little distance. Um, but I also, uh, I generally read of the two of us, and um, I, I really enjoy it because I also it gives me an opportunity to see, you know, what's going on, you know, with the actor, and and there are things that sometimes I can see when I'm reading with someone that if you know that I don't necessarily see if I'm just watching. Yeah. And do you tend to be someone who likes to read this for both? Would you tend to be people who like to redirect in the room? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For, uh, for sure. Yeah. I would say it's pretty rare. That we don't. That we don't. Yeah. Um, even if you have a sense like, oh, maybe someone isn't quite right, but at least, especially if they're new, to say, you know, what it helps you get to know them better and and yeah, yeah. and that it's it's you're not just casting that role. Yeah, you're mm -hmm. casting, you know, forever. for forever for the <laughs> forever uh, for the forever. future. You know, I mean, it, it's silly not to sort of you know see what uh, what else. What else an actor has um, because you know you're going to be looking for something that they have to offer at some point. Mm -hmm. Well, and given that we are talking to a room of actors who probably all want to be found by both of you, <laughs> um, in this day and age, there is so much energy that one can expend on everything from postcards to the Instagram to I, what I, this, this matters I, I, to you. What I, I keep getting doing? this question and. Maybe I'm naive, or maybe I, I, you know, I'm not working on those kinds of shows. But I, I have yet to have it happen where it came down to who had more followers on social media. Now, that being said, I don't cast for the CW. I don't, you know, I mean, I think there are no, and that's no dig on the CW. It's a different way of casting, and and I feel very fortunate that what we've gotten to work on. Uh, is about actors and talent and uh, not, you know, about uh, the social media following. So um, so that's my experience and or our experience. Yeah, I mean, the only thing I'll say is I did, I did a um, pilot, I did some preliminary looking for a high school musical for 
This was not not with, with Jeannie. <laughs> <laughs> as much Nothing as she wrong with wanted that. to do it, um, but and and there were conversations there of like this person has this many Instagram followers or Twitter followers or whatever, and that did not sit well with me. I will say, but I just feel like I should mention that that is that is a conversation that's happening somewhere um but yeah, yeah it's and, for and it's for a very I think it's for quite a world. specific yeah. world yeah. um and quite specific tv and I I think kind of on the broader scale like those things don't matter because you get in the room and you do what you do and that's what matters you know yeah I mean I just Personally, I just don't have interest in working on things if that's what if it's going to come thing, down yeah. to. That's, what am I here for? Like, We're not just going through people's go, Instagram. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just, yeah, hire someone Are who you can, kidding? you know, <laughs> troll and find your <laughs> talent. Um, but, yeah. So someone comes in, they do a great audition. Maybe it's right for the show. Maybe it's not right for what you need at that moment. But as you said, it is casting for forever. How do you want to be kept? Do you want to be kept in touch with? What do you prefer? So yeah, I mean, you know, postcards are, are good. Um, the, the, I do find the reaching out on Facebook or Instagram a little bit strange because I do try to sort of keep those more my, you know, personal life-ish um, as much as one can. But, um, but yeah, postcards or, you know, if you can get my email, that's okay. Um, just, you know, you, you can't always, great. you can't, <laughs> uh, just don't always expect, you know, a response. Um, but, and it's, and it's best to do it, you know, if, if you have something specific, you know, to sort of talk about. Um, but, and I, I do finally have a permanent office space. Um, I moved around so much that, you know, I think people stopped sending me postcards because they were like, I don't even know where you are. Um, or you didn't get that one. And I'm like, no, no, I moved. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think, you know, but also trust that a casting director who's good at what they do is going to remember you that it's it's not just your responsibility it's their responsibility you know to remember people so yeah. and something else i've noticed just looking through a lot of the shows that you've both done you have a lot of theater actors who show up is that a happy accident is that something you specifically look for in a resume um i started in new york theater i started in new york of New York theater um, and uh, and then moved out of here so that's always where my heart lies um, and uh, yeah drawn to you know people who who've trained who've studied um, who understand language who know how to break down a scene um, for sure that's mm -hmm. I gravitate towards and for young people um, I tell them you know you may not have a lot of experience uh, in film and TV but you know for sure list your theaters uh, experience for sure list the people you've studied with um, because you know I will always look at that almost first yeah yeah so Lucy Morningstar that is the answer to your question what stands out in a resume when looking for actors to call in for a casting theater 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 <laughs> <laughs> um, we only have a couple of minutes left and how many followers you have <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> um, Julian Garcia uh, wants to know, is it true that casting directors only watch the first minute of demo reels? I'm going to let you answer. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mean to put you on the spot, but I mean, yeah, I, I, I would say generally and, and not that it's just the first minute, but um, again, especially like on a pilot or something where you're dealing with such a high volume of people we just unfortunately don't have time to watch a five or six minute reel for every person before we decide. Um, so sometimes, yeah, if there's a scene at the top that grabs you, you watch that, or sometimes you kind of do a click kind of skim through um, to see if there's something you know there that grabs you. But I would say it's pretty rare that we just have the time or the resources to be able to watch the whole thing, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, and it doesn't need to be, you know, put your best work first. Um, I mean, it is so funny to see because people will um, put a scene, if they're in a scene with Denzel Washington, um, and they'll put that first on their uh, reel, but it's Denzel Washington talking for like 
five minutes and they maybe have a line at the end or whatever. And you're or like, it's like 10 years old. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, just because you're in a scene with Denzel Washington, I, I, I'm not, if you only have one line, I, I'm not learning anything about you as an actor. So, you know, don't. Denzel's still good. Yeah. Den, that guy, I think, you know <laughs> what? still good. One job away. <laughs> one one job away. And I, I think it's going to happen for him. You <laughs> Write this down, folks. You heard it here. Um, but He's got a lot of followers. This is why I won an Emmy. Um, but, uh, it, so, you know, so don't, I mean, you know, but I think people do that because they think they need to, you know, get, get your attention. Um, but that, you know, that, and, and don't montages, no, no montages, no, montages. no. unless, unless you're a no stunt montages. person, um, you know, there's no point it, cause it's, it's just a way, you know, and then I'm spending time trying to get to the actual, um, yes, scene, you know, and, and now you've pissed me off and, um, <laughs> And so, uh, yeah, don't, no montages, no musical, you know, sort of things. Um, but yeah, put your best work first, I, if, if you can, your more, most recent. Um, and uh, yeah, but we will, you know, I mean, a lot of times we just watch a little bit because I've seen what I need to see. Right. It, you know, it's answered. Um, or if I haven't seen what I need to see, then I, you know, keep going. So as long as we're talking about what to do and not do, any other pet peeves in the room, things like, like, let's talk about props for a second and things like when you have a telephone call or if there's a gun or Thank things like that. God, now with phones, you actually can use this stuff. Because yeah. back when I started, that wasn't the case. <laughs> bring, bring. Uh, a lot of speakers. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Um, I personally am not super bothered by props as long as it's, you know, within reason. Um, water bottles can count for a lot of different things and can give you a little bit of business. Um, you know, uh, looking for something in your purse, you know, using something that, that m makes sense that you would have with you and put it to use for you as opposed to, you know, bringing in a desk and a chair and a lamp and an <laughs> umbrella yeah. and, you know, um, really just, you know, just give me five minutes, I'm gonna set up the scene. Um, so, you know, using things that, that, you know, are sort of natural to what you have with yeah. you. Um, as and opposed again, to bringing a lot, yeah. Yeah, bringing a lot. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, and again, wardrobe, I think, you know, to that end can, can help you mm -hmm. um, sort of be in the character. I mean, you know, I've had, on on the pilot I did with Amy where we were supposed to have this super sweet girl from, you know, Midwest who shows up in the big city, um, you know, very innocent, lovely. And I had girls, you know, showing up in the super short skirt and the high heels and, you know, overdone. I mean, because they want to look their best um, or sell their, you know, femininity, sexuality, those kinds of things. It, it, it didn't work for the, I mean, it, it worked against, the, I, I couldn't get that, that's a case where like the, the wardrobe was working against you because, and then also just maybe go, how can you possibly feel like this character if you're dressed like a hooker? Um, you know, and please don't sit down because that's, I, that's, now I'm distracted by that and it's. I will admit I, I did because we were doing Mrs. Maisel tonight, I did feel like wearing like a nice, cute, pretty dress, but I knew we'd be on these kinds of chairs and. Yeah, I mean, think think about those things, but um, and not to say that if you're going in to audition for a doctor, you need to wear a doctor's coat, but just wear a button up instead of a t-shirt or whatever. Like, just yeah, I think it's just enough to make you feel connected to the character, um, so that and and so that again, it doesn't need to be. This is what the person will look like on the day. Like, we're creative enough. Give us enough credit. Um, but yeah, just something that isn't so distracting that it's like impossible to envision or yeah, or takes you out of the moment. Yeah. So we're gonna have to wrap up, but- um, Oh my gosh, that's so fun. I know, so I, I'm so sad, this went by so fast. Um, is there any last thing that you wanna say to the audience? Any last thing, either specifically about the show, any surprises, anything like that, what you're looking forward so to? So excited for season two. So excited for season two. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, I, I just, uh, I, uh, my, my, my words of wisdom to actors um, and auditioning is it's not about winning the role, it's about winning the room. So just go in, do your best work, 
you know, put the work in before you go in. You don't want to leave there, you know, kicking yourself, going, man, I should have been more prepared. You know, that's your, sometimes your introduction to that casting person. You know, it's it, in, in a way, it's a job interview. So, you know, put your best foot forward. Um, do the best work that you can and then, you know, and then let it go uh, afterwards. But, but trust that if you've done good work, we're going to see that. And as I said, it's our job to remember you. Um, but if you come in, you know, just wanting that job so bad, unfortunately, that reads and it can really sort of, you know, scare producers off. Um, and I think also, you know, that audition is your time. And so if you have questions or more information you need to know about the script or whatever that will inform the choices you make, ask those questions. Do what you need to do to make the most of that. Um, audition and and of that time. Yeah, it's your time in the room, so make it work for you. Maggie, Jeannie, thank you for spending time in the room here with the SAG Foundation. Thanks, everyone. Enjoy your night.